Hello, everybody. Hello. We have with us again the man of men. Nobody anywhere, any place knows the Constitution and the Bill of Rights better than Judge Andrew Napolitano. And if you could find somebody, please let me know. Because the judge just came out with an article. It's going to be out tomorrow about his doing a debate about the Constitution with a top general. And the, the article that he's coming out with tomorrow, it's a great name, is the CIA in your underwear. Oh, they're everywhere, so they must be in your underwear. Hi there, Judge. Hi, Gerald. Good morning. Um, you know, I wrote a piece uh, about 10 years ago called this, The CIA in Your Kitchen. And my bosses at Fox said, this is crazy. This is insane. We can't publish this. And I said to them, did you read the article? Well, no, we don't have to read the article. We read the headline. Of course, the CAA is not in your kitchen. Okay. The article recounts that David Petraeus, then the head of the CAA, gave a what talk that he thought was secret to CIA analysts and revealed that CIA outside vendors had figured out a way for the CIA to lock onto the computer chip in a microwave in your kitchen and in a dishwasher in your kitchen and monitor communications that were nearby the microwave or the dishwasher. So is the CIA in your kitchen, not literally, but digitally, virtually. Fast forward to today, is the CIA in your underwear? It sounds absurd. If you ask that to a, a friend or colleague, they'll think you're nuts. Unless, of course, they saw the presentation made to Congress by uh, Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence, who last week, she made the presentation in writing. She actually made it digitally. Ha ha. While Congress was on vacation, while Joe Biden was asleep on the beach in Rehoboth, she announced that the CIA just spent $22 million to develop textiles uh, to go into shirts, pants, socks, and underwear that will allow the CIA to monitor audio, video, I don't know what they can see from underwear, video, audio, video, and geospatial location of the wearer of these garments with these threads. 22 million of your tax dollars. Actually, there are even more tax dollars involved uh, because two of the labs that helped de um, develop this are universities owned by the government. University of Virginia, founded by Thomas Jefferson, turning in his grave, owned by the state of Virginia, and Penn State, owned by the state of Pennsylvania, helped develop this along with DuPont and uh, 25 other lesser known uh, American and foreign uh, corporations. So what does this tell us? This tells us what we already knew. The federal government's appetite to surveil us is insatiable, bizarre, and has reached the point of being disgusting. It's respect for the natural human right to be left alone, protected by the Fourth Amendment, is non-existent. Its fidelity to the Constitution is utterly non-existent. Your reference to a debate I had was with General Michael Hayden, then the director of the NSA. He challenged me to the debate. I accepted the challenge. It was at the CPAC, the Conservative Political Action uh, Conference, then held uh, in, in Maryland outside of uh, Washington, D.C. And when I challenged him about the absence of fidelity to the Constitution, he said, well, the Fourth Amendment requires reasonableness, and my 60,000 spies are reasonable. <laughs> After about 10 minutes of laughter died down, I said, the Supreme Court general, as you should know, has ruled that all surveillance without a search warrant is unreasonable and unconstitutional. Well, the Fourth Amendment doesn't apply to us. It only applies to law enforcement. Baloney, read it. And I read it. There is no exception for intel. It applies to all of government. How do you know that? Well, it was written in the aftermath of British intelligence agents banging down the doors of colonists' homes, ostensibly looking for stamps, compliance with the Stamp Act. They were really looking for subversive material. Well, if there was subversive material, they should have found it. What the king considered subversive material, we consider the founding documents of the country, General. That's the way the debate went. But it shows you the mindset of the federal government. Seize what you can, grab what you can, spy wherever you can, the Constitution be damned.
that's why I wrote this. As I, I wrote the title you do, to attract people's attention to it. But the public needs to know what the government does in its name and with its tax dollars. Yeah, yeah. what you just said about this uh, general, the general piece of crap, the arrogance that you just really pointed out, the arrogance of these people think that they have the rights above us. We can do anything we want. And in the beginning over here of your article, you write 11 years ago in this column uh, asked if the CIA was in your kitchen. Folks who read it, only, only the title of the column mocked it. Yet then CIA director General David Betrayus betrayed us. I think he spelt it wrong. <laughs> gave a talk to CIA analysts that he fully expected to be kept secret. In the talk, he revealed that the CIA vendors had discovered a means to log on to the computer chips in the kitchen microwave ovens and dishwashers. This, this guy, again, an arrogant, 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 arrogant betrayed us. This is the arrogant clown. Do you remember when the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner Obama became president? When he lied his way into office as a peace candidate? And what did he do? What was it, the, um, uh, the, the name of the operation... Um, Enduring freedom or something like that? No, oh, you mean where they bombed they bombed and destroyed Libya, then the most prosperous country in Africa, while, while Congress was on spring break and he was in Brazil? That stunt? Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he got 30, 33,000 troops Betrayus was in charge of in Afghanistan. Oh, you know, it gets even worse. Uh, Petraeus, if you ever see him in uniform, because he doesn't wear his uniform anymore because he's retired, but if you see his uniform, which is basically a costume filled yeah. with all kinds of ribbons, some of which are battle ribbons. I said to one of my guests, was Petraeus ever in a battle? And they hesitated and said no, but his troops gave him a live grenade once and he <laughs> threw it into an empty lot so he could claim that he was nearby an American explosive device and thereby qualify for this additional ribbon on his chest. Yep. The time he gave this speech, which embarrassed him because one of his uh, agents revealed it and it, it under, helped the American public understand how the government violates the constitution. He was the director of the CIA. It only lasted 13 months because of an affair that he had that he lied about, which I don't think should have deposed him from it, but that's the way they treated him. Um, he showed a remarkable indifference to the Fourth Amendment, just like everybody that runs these uh, spy agencies yep. uh, does. They, they don't care about search warrants. They don't think the Constitution uh, applies to them. No. Uh, when Obama bombed Libya, uh, he used CIA assets and claimed it wasn't the military. Well, they dressed like military, they looked like military, they fired military weapons, but he's right, they worked for the CIA. Therefore, he didn't need a declaration of war in his mind. Therefore, he didn't have to report it to Congress in his mind because it was the CIA. The CIA has become a private, secret, personal, personal military that works for the President of the United States. That's how dangerous it is, with no accountability whatsoever. And this guy betrayed us. You know what his current job is, right? He's a he's a, a mouthpiece for uh, one of these uh, defense department or or military industrial complex funded uh, think tanks. He's on KKR, uh, K, the biggest one, well, the biggest firms. KKR. Oh, Colbert, the, uh, Colbert, Kravis, Roberts, right? Yep. Yeah. I think he's vice that chair. Own, that own fancy much title. of the. Corp the, most of the corporations of, the, of America, you know, they buy up everything. Again, yes. like George Carlin said, it's one big club and you ain't in it. Right. Again, think of this guy. A murderer in Afghanistan, Iraq. Then he becomes a CIA director. And now he's with KKR. Maybe he should be KKK, you know? <laughs> and again, these are the people that are, and then you talk about the CIA. Look at all the great accomplishments they've achieved. Name me one. Name me one thing that we're so proud that the CIA has done. It doesn't exist. 
unless you're proud of uh, throwing uh, overthrowing the government in uh, in Kiev in 2014, overthrowing the government in Iran uh, in 1952, uh, suggesting that there be um, a friendly fire in Miami in 1962, so they could be blamed uh, on Castro assassinating JFK. These are murderous thugs on the American payroll who are lawless and operate outside the Constitution. Yeah. yeah. And if we say that, they may assassinate you and me, too. True. And that's what RFK Jr. said. He said that uh, the CIA killed his father and his uncle, JFK. You know, this is terrible what's happened to this country. And you go on, this, this article is very, very informative, and everybody should really read it. And um, uh, the, about, you say, you can't make this stuff up. The federal government's appetite for surveillance is quite literally insatiable. Well, it is insatiable. I mean, it already, uh, Gerald, you and I know this, and I think people watching us now know this, holding up my uh, iPhone those who are listening to the audio only, it already captures every keystroke in here. And, and if you make a mistake and you correct it, it captures that as well. It captures what you originally typed and then what you uh, typed over. Same with your uh, desktop. Do they have search warrants for that? No. Do they read it in real time? Well, of course not. They don't, even with 60,000 people in the NSA, they don't have the person power to read it in real time, but it's all stored and available for them when they, when they want it. Where is it stored? In Utah. What's in Utah? Utah is the largest cons known constructed by humans building in the world. It's five times the size of the Pentagon. And it's where the American intelligence community stores on computer chips all this data. The public know about this? I doubt it. The public, you know, you know there's Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. Pakistan, Stan means home of, home of the Uzbeks, home of the Krizaks. Right. Home of the Afghans means home of. I call this Dumbfuckistan, America, the home of the dumb fucks. I mean, the people don't know. They don't know anything. But do you hear about that? Oh, oh, oh what, the hurricane. Uh, oh, oh, what happened at Burning Man? You know, what, what is that? What they call it? Burning Man? That thing. Was, What's that thing wrong was, with you? Burning Man was on the front page of the New York Times. Listen, I'm being sarcastic. I agree with you 100. percent The public is more concerned with these temporary, fleeting, uh, cultural phenomena than it is with government's excess and destruction of their liberty behind their backs, with their money, with power that we have given the government. I know. And it doesn't matter who runs the government. Nope. It could be Donald Trump, who himself was victimized by this, yet expanded it. It could be George W. Bush, who expanded it radically because the Patriot Act is going to keep us safe after 9-11. Uh, it could even be Dwight Eisenhower, behind, who warned us about the military-industrial complex, but behind whose back the CIA grew uh, in leaps and bounds. Every single president since 1947 has seen this monstrosity grow. And the president who founded the CIA, of whom I am not a fan at all because I think he was a mass murderer with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Harry Truman, in 1963, bemoaned the CIA, said, this is not what I intended, and it should be shut down shortly before he died. It's so sad what's happened to this country. And there's, you know, I just went to a, um, up in Woodstock, which is only 15 minutes away from me up here. I'm in Kingston. The Woodstock? Yeah. Wow. Woodstock, it's libtard land. Scott Ritter was there. It was a, a movement to free Julian Assange. Mm. And the, the chief speaker there was a uh, former ambassador uh, of, in the UK. And he was sent to jail for whistleblowing with the lies. And only 17 people showed up. And the average age was older than me. Oh, boy. No young people. All old people. I'm going to guess that knowing Scott, he was as passionate and articulate as if there had been 17,000 people there. Yeah. And and the passion that he has and the truth that he says, and I guess, you know, I mean, look at his background, my God. And, you know, this guy was, 
you know, former top Marine and on and on and on, or, or in the service, I forget which, which, uh, sector. Marines. 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 Yeah. And, and, uh, a UN weapons inspector and on and on. And his passion and truth was so heartwarming, but it was so sad that there are so few people. And this is Woodstock. And I said to the guys, I said, you know why there are no people here? You know why there's no protests? I said, because during the Vietnam War, we were getting drafted. That's why they took to the streets. Now they could care less. These are the same, these are the same libtards that how dare you not get vaxxed. So who lives in who lives up there now? Are these the uh, aged hippies, the, the yeah. kids that were wild in 1969, are now themselves 69 years old and couldn't care less? They could care less. Care mm. less. The radio stations, they talk about peace, they're full of crap. Nothing. 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 And that's America today. If we don't see a change happen big, it's over here. It's gone. It's falling apart in front of our eyes. I mean, look at look at the two deadbeats we got, dead and buried, McConnell and 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 Biden. Look at them. Yeah, yeah. The American way, left and right, they're both out of their minds. Well, you're presuming they have minds out of which to be. I mean, one of them on the left can't put two coherent sentences together and the other on the right just keeps freezing up, which is really, really bizarre to watch it happen. I mean, I feel sorry for both of them, but they do not I, uh, belong with the power that they have. One, you know, controls the Senate and the other controls the executive branch of the United States government. Yeah, I know. And these are the people running our lives. Yes. How stupid can anybody be? It's right in front of everybody's eyes. Dead and buried are the people that are running our lives. There's, and there's, uh, no fight. there's more and more talk amongst Democrats that Joe has to go. I, I wish that talk would center, even though I, you and I disagree with him on a couple of fundamental issues. We agree with him on many other issues. I wish that talk would focus on RFK Jr., but it, I don't think it's going to go that way. It's going to go towards uh, the governor of California have a very, very difficult time defending his governorship. California is in worse shape than the United States is. Yep. People are leaving California in droves. You get tapped. Oh, it's like New Jersey. If I sold my home in New Jersey and moved to Florida, I have to pay an exit tax. You sell your home in California and move to Texas. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's true. You have to pay an exit tax, supposedly, to keep you from leaving. Oh, where's, the Ber Arab where's the Berlin Wall? Well, it's not a wall anymore. It's a tax. Oh, that arrogant Newsom. That, that's yeah. the clown. The, my daddy was a top lawyer for the Getty guys. You know, oh, that guy? Yeah. The guy that locked down every place while he's up in the French laundry, $400 a plate partying. Oh, that yeah. Gavin? That that's same, same person. Yep. Same person. The, uh, and, and, and isn't San Francisco a beautiful place now? Oh, it's so lovely. Yeah. It oh, in L.A.? Yeah. Yep. Terrible. Terrible. Now, Judge, we need a new movement. And as I said before, uh, my ticket to change America is RFK Jr. for president and Judge Andrew Napolitano for vice president. And this is the way it should be. We'd have a we bring this country back to where it should be because nobody, as I said, nobody could touch you when it comes to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, our founding fathers. This is what the country fought for that they've robbed us of right in front of our eyes week after week after week. You're putting out articles about how they're robbing us of our rights and the people are doing nothing about it. Correct. The people are indifferent and complacent and it's very, very dangerous. That's why nine, that's why uh, I almost said nine 11. That's why the COVID lockdown succeeded. People had no idea the uh, insidious, surveillance that the government has on us and no idea the power we've uh, let the government get away with exercising. You know, um, I, COVID, I, COVID was a dry run for the next one. Yep. And the next one, the next one will produce either civil war or revolution because the public, uh, I don't think will stand for it. The police themselves will refuse to enforce it. Their wives and children won't let their husbands and fathers do it. I don't know. Maybe well, I'm just talking out loud. It's a disgrace where we are. It's a disgrace. But again, 
I don't think there'll be a civil war or revolution. There's going to be a nuclear war that, that'll end life on earth if we don't stop that. And, and they keep talking more and more. Oh, by the way, the, one of the Ukrainian uh, top guys yesterday came out and said that uh, World War III's begun. Yeah, no kidding. We only said this when the war, you know, it happened a long time ago. So anybody, if you want to support us, donate to Occupy Peace. And if you want the truth in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the great guests that he has on, you want to go to Judging Freedom with Judge Andrew Napolitano. There's nothing like with the show that he's puts on and the people that he brings on. So check it out. And uh, oh, one more thing, Judge, you're talking about robbing our freedom and surveillance. How about the New York Police Department uh, sending out drones during oh. Labor Day weekend to see what people were doing as they're partying? Unbelievable. So there was some sort of an ethnic uh, celebration over Labor Day went on for a couple of days and the police actually used drones to swoop down in the backyards uh, of parties. And um, the left, not libertarians, but the left progressives screamed so loud and long that the police stopped it after two days of doing it. Now, whether they'll do it again or not, I don't know. But the very thought that they could get away with this, again, yeah. shows their utter indifference to and disdain for the Fourth Amendment. They couldn't care less. Yeah. And it's not only disdain for the Fourth Amendment, and they couldn't care less. It's disdain for we, the people of the United States. It's disdain, for, do, it's disdain for our human dignity. That's it. That they could send a piece of metal to spy on us whenever they want, wherever they want, however they want. And now these nut jobs in Washington want to spy on us when we put our clothing on in the morning. I mean, that just uh, disqualifies them from holding public office in the United States. Well, you know, the, the, you have this article again. Is the CIA in your underwear? So I know how to I know how we could fight this. How? Don't wear underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you live in a nudist colony, none of this works. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on, Judge. We'll All see the you best, next week. Carol. See you next week. Thank you, my friend.